Hello and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the chat box infographic and you see series there, it's a series. So we have a couple of these coming out um, periodically throughout the timeline as I do more tutorials, but this is the first one. So I have my colors on my right hand side. I have these two circles here, they weren't meant to be here, but they will help just the same and I have my 1700 by 1700 should be pixels well 1800 right here um, canvas with this in the middle so I'm just going to delete this just for now because we're going to recreate that so first let's create our first circle and you can go there and create it by going to the ellipse tool holding control and shift and scaling up good now will give you a proportional circle um, that's what these circles were good then we're going to duplicate it twice we're going to carry the first duplicate up holding control and just dragging this up slightly and we're going to create that world that we just deleted and I'm going to drag the second one down and we're going to eye it to say it's about here then we're going to duplicate the middle circle Hold shift and scale in. About here is good. You can even carry these down a bit more. Okay. Right. Next we're going to select shift or hold shift and select the two of these. Go to path and union. Now we have the two of these unified. We're going to double click to activate the nodes tool and we're just going to draw a box around these two unified circles and you want to change the node type to make selected nodes corner so when we apply this next boolean mode on it we don't have any problems good next we're going to duplicate this middle you can put in a different color to see that it's duplicated and we're going to select the two circles go to path and cut path and then we're just going to remove the top and the bottom right. and that gives us a traditional shape next we also want to draw a line straight through them it's going to activate the snap tool and um, see that snap to center of objects is activated or snap to rotation center just for the sake of it so you can get that equal and we're just going to duplicate with control and D hold control and activate our rotational handles by clicking on it again and just bring this down to the side I think the path size I have for this stroke style is 2 and you can find your stroke style size if you go to object fill and stroke and go to the stroke style tab have it at two so it's going to change these to two as well and then just going to scale them just going to put them pull them in double click to activate the nodes tool and just hold control and pull them in so that when you pull them in they don't waver to the left or the right they just stay in the center and we have our globe good so I'm just going to turn off the snap tool here and scale up a bit okay and now we had it a bit thicker if I remember correctly so we're just going to increase the size to say let's increase it to 10 I think 10 is good and we can control and G this, which is which will group them. And then we're gonna activate our dropper tool and select this dark one holding shift. Good. And that will give us our globe. Yeah, this is a good globe. Okay then, so we're gonna move into the actual chat boxes themselves now. And for that we're gonna go to the rectangle tool and create a rectangle. 
And keep in mind it has a stroke, so I'm just going to take off the stroke for now. And we're going to use, just going to color it the base colors. We'll move into the gradient slightly in a bit. And we're going to create that point for which it's pointing to in the chat box. Is this about okay? I think you can even pull this up slightly more. Okay. And for that, we're going to go into the star tool and just draw a shape. Make sure it's on the polygons. And I'm going to reduce the corners to three. Right. Then we're just going to click it to activate the rotational handles and we're going to rotate it until it's like this, pointed downwards. And I'm going to come down here and just scale it down. I think um, this is about good. Yeah, I think this is about good. But then we're going to go to path object to path so that we can get the nodes select these two nodes here see that your show transformational handles for selected nodes is activated in your tool control box and we're just going to hold control and shift and scale across gently then we're going to select these two nodes right here and we're going to insert new nodes into segments select these two nodes insert your new nodes into segments I'm going to select the two nodes again into segments set them into segments and then we're just going to delete this node right here and just by eye we're just going to pull these handles up until we get something circular because in our example the triangle was a little bit circular and you can spend your time and get this thing accurate but this is a tutorial so I do have limited time let me just see if I can pull this up a bit more good and so we have our general shape for our chat okay for the next part of our chat box just going to select these two I'm going to go to path and union to unify the shape into one good then we're going to duplicate it and we're going to go to stroke style it should still be open if you're using this version of inkscape i think it's 0 0.92 or 0 0.91 and we are going to apply a stroke to it of white make it 10 i think it's 10 let me check uh, 10 is a bit wide let's use 5 uh, notice that the new Inkscape uses uh, millimeters as the default value for the um, measurement. If you're not comfortable with that, you may want to change it to pixels, but it's in millimeters here. Millimeters tends to be bigger in terms of the in size of the canvas. So if you computer can't manage it, it may be better to use these values as pixels instead. They may alter here and there, but you should be able to find a balance. Okay, so we've got it, and then we're going to remove the fill by going here and just clicking remove fill. I just removed it a while ago, so you're not going to see it on mine. Okay, so we have this chat box. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to create the gradient. For that, we're going to go to our gradient tool and activate the radial or elliptical circular gradient and we're going to pull this up or pull this down sorry good and then we're just going to in fact let's do the red first because that's why i have these colors to the side so i can just do the red first uh good and we're going to create a new marker within this gradient so making sure the gradient tool is selected whoops mix these two up sometimes um, we're going to hold control and just double click on the line and that will create a new gradient stop and that means that when I want to add another layer of color to the gradient not just two stops I can use this look like I've done the opposite way around let me just flip it 
put the red here and put the lighter color right here good and i can just drag it down a bit good and we get the sort of general color fade that we're looking for i think so uh, the red may even be slightly redder let's see if i can go to fill and stroke and just make it slightly red yeah i think that's about it good and then we're gonna have to have a ring of light which i just did because i thought that was fun it made it look sort of re have a sort of um realism to it that was kind of nice it's gonna remove the fill of this and just gonna duplicate this one up here let's change it into a different color so you can see what i'm doing a bit better and i'm simply just gonna go to path and cut path and remove this and remove that and remove this so you have this ring of light right here and i'm just gonna make it keep it the white you can change the stroke to maybe a three i'm gonna apply a bl blur of say let's try five five is good and you can even reduce the opacity a bit let's take it down to say 20 yeah 20 is good cool and then we get our first chat box gradient good and we're going to apply the same thing with all of these except we're going to use we're going to use the other colors so let's put this down to the bottom because i think the red was at the bottom i should have just deleted these let me just delete these all right let's put you down to the bottom it's about the right size just reduce the opacity or just select on a lighter color for this bring this down and the first one was the orange so we're gonna scale this in Bring this to the side, making sure it's in line. And I'm gonna change this to orange now. So if I can remember, the middle was this light orange and you move over to a deeper, rich, more saturated orange at the end. Let's come here and then in the middle was the middle ground. So, put this here and um starting this up a bit yeah then you get this and uh, the ray there just fits in nicely okay and then we're going to move on to the blue and select the two of them and duplicate then we're going to go to path and no not path sorry i'm going to go to our two control box and we're going to flip it horizontally like we forgot the let's just group it for a second and just drop it underneath the two and group with control and g and then you can just go and control and u to ungroup them okay once we have that we're just going to increase the size a little bit of this so it's not bigger than the red, but it's bigger than the orange. And the orange should be behind this one. So let me just put this behind, put this behind. So you get something that looks like this. Good. All right, let's change our color now. If I can remember, the lightest color was the lightest color was the um, wasn't this blue? This was the darker blue. So, using the dropper tool, which is D, or you can go to dropper tool down here, select the blue, and you can select a lighter blue here, pull it up, and bring it more to the side, and select this darker blue also and then just lighten up this blue a bit 
And so we're gonna just darken it a bit. And you can kind of play about with it until you get the sort of colors that you're looking for here. And then we can just get that color up. Okay. All right, that looks good. You're just gonna put the light wave here and put it to the side right here. Let me just check to see if I and I put it on the side. Yes, I did. Good. All right, so we've got our basic look for the chat box. And what you can do, you can also just group all of these so that if you're moving them later on or you're moving them just to adjust them better then you can get a better you can get a better grip of all of them okay so now that we have these up hmm, I just want to group these so I did now that we have these up and they're looking like this we're going to add the drop shadow and there's quite a few ways that you can do this but I typically just hold control and pull down. So we're just going to activate our Bezier tool. Draw a line that goes diagonal to this shape. Hold control and drag down and you can get increments until you get one that you like. And then just do the same for this, hold control and drag down. And you can link them afterwards. Good. Then we're just going to change this to black. And with the black, in fact, we're going to change it to like a deep gray. I may change it to black afterwards. And we're going to activate, make sure that our linear gradient is activating. And we're just going to pull down. And we're going to place it underneath. And remove the stroke. I think this is nice, but we just need to darken it a bit. Good. Then we're gonna active do the same thing for here. Duplicate it with Control and D. Hold Control and Shift and scale it down. And we're gonna place it underneath this one. And we're gonna duplicate it for the last one here. And place it underneath here. For the final one here and that gives you that nice drop shadow effect and both of them intersecting each other really nice okay and for last we're going to make sure that we have our annotation handles so we have a step three that comes up here with our bezier tool we're just going to activate them we're just going to create them so bezier tool and I'm just going to draw a line, hold control to get that increment slope. And draw a busier. And draw a busier again. And we're going to increase these all to a stroke style size of one. And we're just going to add circles at the end. All right now, ours is transparent, so going to increase the opacity hold shift select the black and, and place these down here duplicate and place them at every spot and there we have our chat box infographic you can go ahead and just add all of our text and our oh yes there is one more thing that you can get from this that I did want to go through let me just select all of this text so that we can fill it in it won't fit in precisely where everything is but you'll get the point you can sort of just move things piece by piece that in pull it up here 
Last, we're just going to add this lens flare effect on the red, I think. It's on. Let me just double check and see. It's on the red. To add the very last pop to this infographic right here. Okay, so we're just going to go and activate our star tool, activate star, put the spokes up to six. And we're just going to scale up with control and shift, select the white, remove this stroke. And just going to put it here. I think this is good. Then I'm going to activate the ellipse tool and draw an ellipse freehand. Make sure it stretches across like this, a little further. And squinch it just a little bit. Good. And then we're just going to select these two and blur. Good. You're just going to reduce the blur of the one below a bit more and increase the blur of the star like a bit more. Doing it freehand, but you can definitely take your time and create a nice one. And that's going to Group them with Control and G and place it right at the red corner. And there you have it, the chat box corporate infographic. If you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of these, you can also give it a thumbs up. But it's a series, so they will be coming. And as always, subscribe, like, and share. But until I see you again, get up and design a new dawn. Later.